So welcome to one more session of uh, our Euro Oncology platform for kidney cancer series. Uh, today we have uh, Professor Rakit Hanan, is a prof full professor at UT Southwest in Dallas and radiation oncology. He's going to talk uh, to us about some new trends in uh, SBRT for kidney cancer. Welcome. Thank you, Mir, for having me. It's my pleasure. So uh, my first question goes basically, and what would be the primary use of SBRT in the primary tumor in the kidney? No, good question. Thank you. Um, so for the longest time, it was thought that uh, kidney cancer is not responsive or resistant to radiation, but we learned that it is really mainly to the conventional low dose per fraction radiation. And um, with the advancement of technology, we are now able to deliver high dose per fraction, ablative doses focused to the uh, tumor. And uh, this we learned also that is actually very effective. And this was shown not only in the cell lines, not only in preclinical models in our institution, but in, in patients as well. So uh, the challenge with the kidney was that it moves with respiration. So you actually have to hit a moving target and then to deliver very high focused ablative doses, you needed the development of technology. But now we have that technology and we are able to deliver, you know, single fraction, 25, 26 gray, um, or three fractions or five fractions, fractions meaning each fraction is a treatment. Uh, and in just one to five treatments, we have reported now more than 90% local control rate. So, so it started with phase one data um, at, at Harvard first, and then uh, Shiva Shankar's group um, published their feasibility phase two study. And we just published our first phase two study with rigorous endpoints of local control of both pathologic confirmation and radiographic confirmation and we showed that uh, we have a local control rate of 94 percent and and since then uh, because these cases are not very easy to find um, uh, the IROC was formed by Shiva Shankar where where he uh, multiple institutions are contributing cases and with the IROC registry uh, we just published in Lancet Oncology uh, a local control rate also of 95%, five-year local control rate. So now we have data that durable local control is there. And some of the things I wanted to point out uh, is that, uh, you know, when a patient comes in with a small renal mass, um, there are multiple options and, and, you know, there is advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so, for example, you know, uh, therapeutic ablation and other things may have limitations of size. Radiation does not have the limitation of size. Also, radiation is completely non-invasive. Uh, and, um, uh, and even tumors that are in renal pelvis, we are able to treat without worrying that we will render the kidney non-functional. So there are a number of advantages that it would be, should be considered ad, as another arsenal an option for the patients. Maybe in more elderly patients? Yeah, I mean, so far? exactly. Definitely, certainly for patients that are not um, uh, candidates for surgery or, or, you know, minimally invasive procedures, for them for sure. Uh, but we think uh, that it could be an option for patients that are eligible for stereotactic radiation. Okay. And uh, do you foresee any other applications of SBRT within the kidney field? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So another thing we are exploring right now is because now we know that it is effective for both primary and metastasis, uh, metastatic uh, kidney cancers, we are exploring its application for the treatment of IVC tumor thrombus. So uh, kidney cancer, as you know, is one of the cancers that can invade into the IVC and can go all the way up to the heart as a level four thrombus. It becomes a very challenging case uh, and really needs very specialty um, uh, tertiary academic centers to treat them. They cannot just be treated um, locally. So we are exploring a number of applications of stereotactic radiation for IVC thrombus. One of them is on a clinical trial where we give uh, new adjuvantly. So before the surgery, we give uh, high dose stereotactic radiation to the um, IVC and IVC portion, not the primary tumor, just the thrombus in the IVC. And that way, uh, one, we reduce re systemic recurrence by killing off live emboli that may be shed during surgery, or if there are renal vein invasion and the surgeons are able, not able to resect it, they don't have to worry about it because those areas is now sterilized by radiation. Um, and also for the neuroadjuvant trial, at least we also take advantage of potential um, uh, immunogenic properties of radiation. 
Uh, so, so that's in the in, in new adjuvant setting, but other applications where I have treated uh, IVC thrombus uh, is late recurrence. So, so the patient had thrombectomy and then there is an isolated recurrence in the thrombus and a re-resection is difficult. Uh, and, and another setting which I think may be particularly effective uh, is if a patient is very comorbid to undergo a very extensive surgery as thrombectomy, but not so much so for just a simple uh, or radical nephrectomy. In that case, I have treated the thrombus and the surgeons took out the, the primary kidney tumor, either before surgery or after surgery. I've actually done both. Uh, and that could convert a complicated surgery into a simple surgery. How about in the oligometastatic setting? That's that's another very um, active area of research. Um, and we have now published our phase two study uh, of oligometastatic renal patients to be controlled only with radiation. So we will treat these patients with curative intent radiation and then just watch them. And then if they develop another site of metastasis, we, we keep uh, doing stereotactic radiation uh, to those sites. And we showed that we can control these patients almost over, so in the retrospective study, we showed we can control them more than 15 months. But in the prospective study, we can control them more than two years. So these are select group of patients. So um, you know, for some of them, active surveillance may be an option, but active, active surveillance often eventually uh, needs the systemic therapy. And also patient uh, want treatment for their tumors. So that's another reason. But nonetheless, we are now uh, bringing that as, in, as a prospective study where we have designed a large randomized trial through ecog acrin This is e e e a 8211 our source trial. Um, and we are planning to open that later on in this summer where we will take two to five oligometastatic RCC patients and randomize them to receive either stereotactic radiation only and sequential radiation versus systemic therapy um, up front. And the patients in the oligomet uh, in the in radiation group, eventually if they progress, they will be eligible to get standard of care systemic therapy. And our goal is to show non-inferiority of overall survival, but a benefit of quality of life. So it's a co-primary co endpoint of greater than grade three or higher toxicity as well. Okay, so, so it's an exciting study. <laughs> yes. Yeah, work in progress, exciting study, and 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 really phase uh, prospective randomized evidence is not available. So this oligometastatic group is an uh, is an open-ended question right now, and options could be surgery, radiation, surveillance, mm. or systemic therapy. Any number of them. Any key elements coming out to spec for next year? Yeah. So another um, thing that we think could be Potentially, uh, applic a potential application of stereotactic radiation is the oligoprogressive setting. So this is when you are treating the patient with systemic therapy, but everything is responding. Um, but only one or two sites of metastasis has become resistant. Mm -hmm. This makes a lot of sense with kidney cancer having so much heterogeneity and have, having a, an additional mutations that develop in one site, that it's possible that one site is resistant, everything else is responding. So in that setting, it makes sense to take out the resistant site with stereotactic radiation. And we have shown that in our retrospective series first, followed by a small prospective study, which actually I will talk about tomorrow uh, in this meeting, uh, the, uh, we showed that by adding stereotactic radiation, you, you can increase the duration of ongoing systemic therapy by approximately you know, uh, 10 months to close to a year even. And interestingly, both our retrospective and prospective studies showed that when the systemic therapy is IO, there is better PFS extension, again, suggesting that radiation may have an immunogenic property. Mm -hmm. And by combining that, because you take a resistant clone at the same time you do in you induce antigen presentation with stereotactic radiation, um, uh, that you could create potentially a synergistic effect. Okay. So a lot coming on for the... Uh, we are very excited yes. about stereotactic radiation and its application in kidney cancer. We believe that it will become an arsenal in part of the multimodality uh, treatment options that we could offer to our patients. And a lot more clinical trial needs to be done for that for sure. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, comments today and hope you enjoy the meeting.